Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Investors Trading Academy lecture series. Our new series is called Speculate, Invest, Trade the Financial Markets from the Start to the Profit. This is lecture three, Trading Terminology. Now this total lecture series contains nine lectures. We'll start off with learning the basics of the financial markets and then we're going to move on to learning to understand technical and fundamental analysis and how to read charts. From there we'll move on to trading and smart decisions. Each lecture will slowly prepare you to move forward. Now I would appreciate it very much if you would watch these lectures in order. I'd also appreciate it greatly if you would click the subscribe button or the bell icon down below. I promise you we're not going to bother you with anything. We're not going to send you any emails. All we're going to do is send you a ping when I upload a new class. So please subscribe. It's very important to me. YouTube is how we support publishing all these videos. So let's dive into lecture number three, trading terminology. Now these are words and phrases that you need to know because in all of your reading, in all of your research, in all your perusing the internet, you need to, you'll see these phrases or words repeated over and over and you have to understand what they mean. Too many people just assume that they know what the definition or the explanation is. <clears throat> now one of the first things you should know is what type of orders you can place especially in the Forex market, the CFD market, in the options market, basically whenever you're trading with an online broker. So we start out with the word market order. A market order is a instruction from you or to your broker, from you to your platform or you to your broker to buy or sell that particular asset at the best available price now. Now we have limit and stop orders. Limit orders are very, very important. I have never placed an order, a market order. I only place limit orders. Limit order allows you to set the price at which you're willing to pay for the asset. So say hypothetically stock number ABC is trading at $100 and 10 cents at the moment. Okay. And you're willing to buy it at 110, but you want to buy it a little bit lower. And you know, it fluctuates throughout the day, you know, maybe a dollar. So you tell the computer system or your broker to execute your trade when it hits 99, say 50. Okay. Whenever that price is available, the computer will generate your or execute your order. That means if you got in at 99.50 instead of $100.10, you already made 60 cents in your favor. A stop order is a little bit more complex or complicated. Now it, they were very involved before the platforms and the technology came up and a stop order was an order we use to move in the opposite direction. Today a stop order is considered a risk control order. What it does is it you tell the computer system that if the asset falls below a certain price to close your position. Now there's many types of stop orders. Okay, so let's continue on with stock A, B, and C. It was you're trading at $100.10. You were willing to buy it at $99.50, but you were sure throughout the daily swings it might fall as low as 99, say 25. But you don't want to take a loss more than 99. That's a 50 cent loss per share. Okay. So you tell the computer to stop order, you place a stop order at the time of your execution or the time of your setup of your order to close your position if the stock ever falls at 99 or below. That means if the stock starts to tumble, bad news comes out, the market crashes for some reason, the system will automatically close your trade at 99. So the biggest risk you're taking is 99.50 to 99. Okay. Now that sounds like it's a magic tool. It is an important tool but you have to understand that the markets move up and down, up and down, up and down. You have to calculate what price that market might swing to in the normal swings of a day so that you don't get stopped out 
just because of the normal swings and the market moved in your favor. Now, you can continually move your stop order until it's executed. So you can continue watching whatever the market's doing and move your stop order. Now, the stop order also works in several other ways. We have trailing stop loss orders or stop losses. It means you can tell the system to place your stop loss at say 50 points. So you get in at 99.50, your stop loss would be at 99. As, this, as the price moves up to say to $100.10, your stop loss order would be moved up and it would always trail the upward movement by 50 points. So when you were $100.10, your stop loss would automatically move up to $99.60. means you've already tech protected 10% profit. If it moved up to $100.50, okay, your stop loss would have moved up and would be at $100 now. So it's always moving behind it. Now, when the market falls, it doesn't go back down. It will close you out when the market falls below that price. We also have something called a guaranteed stop order, which is a little bit more complex, but that helps you only if the market crashes and there's no, it guarantees you, you will get out of the market at a specific price if the market crashes, because a lot of times there's no liquidity. So you have to keep that in mind. Then we have take profit orders. Now take profit orders should also be set up when you're setting up your trade, because they'll be executed automatically also. A take profit order says, tells the computer, you're very happy to take profit at, say you got open at 99.50. If the market ever hits $100.50, you're willing to close your position and take your profit. Because the market may move, like I said, moves up and down, ups and down. It may peak at $100.50 for 10 seconds and then go back to $100.40 and $140.35 and stay there. The system will close your order and take your profit whenever it hits that number. Now, any of these numbers, even your limit order can be moved and changed. The limit order can be changed anytime up to execution. The stop order and the take profit orders can be changed after the execution of the trade, but before they've taken place. And so it's very important to understand all of these because these are ways that you can create profit and protect yourself from loss without even knowing the in-depth movement of an asset. Now, the most common order is the market order. With this type of order, you are buying or selling the currency or the asset at the best available price. A limit order is placed to buy below the market or sell above the market. Essentially, if you think the market price will bounce off a certain price, but don't want to wait for the market to reach that price, you will use a limit order. Remember, all of these are instructions to the computer just to do something at a specific price or a specific time. Now, just imagine, you could set up a executable order at a limit order at, say you sell, Bitcoin hit 28,000 yesterday, I believe it was, or, or just a while ago. Well, that's an unbelievable price. You know if it hit 28,000, it's most likely going to fall back down. So you could have told the system at any time Bitcoin hits 28,000, execute a sell. And the minute it peaked over at 28,001, you would have opened a sell order and you could have sat on it as it fell down, 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 down. So you can set it and you can have orders that are good to close as to close the day, good to cancel. It means it'll sit on the system for as long as it takes till it's executed. You can also say good to cancel to say the end of January, the end of February. You can set it up any which way you want. There's all types of orders. We have OCO, one cancels the other. You should know all of this because it is about making profit. I mean, again, take stock A, B, and C. It was trading at $100.10. You wanted to execute it. If you would have bought it at 110 and it ended up, when you saw it, it was at 135, you closed out, you made 25 points profit. But if you would have placed your limit order and your take profit order, you would have gotten in at 99.50 and gotten out at $100.50. So what would you have made? You would have made 100 points. 
Now another concept, another term we have to understand is margin and leverage. Margin and leverage are not a technically a credit facility. Nobody looks at your credit score and decides that you should get so much credit. Nobody looks at your trading history. Margin and leverage are set by the regulators. They're available to every single trader. Now, almost all brokers offer trading on margin and leverage today. So let's explain this important concept. A margin is part of your trading account that is set aside for opening a position on leverage. So let's explain it this way. And there, there is no cost for this. You want to buy a house. You have to give the broker the down payment in cash, and then you'll apply for a mortgage. Okay. So you give the broker a check for $50,000. That's not a cost to you. It's your down payment on the house. You again get a mortgage for the other $950,000, and you obtain that million dollar house. It was your portion of the down payment. Now, since you've given that money away, even though you have the asset worth a million dollars, you no longer have the $50,000 in cash. When you sell that asset, you could pay back the bank the 950 and just say you sold at the same price, you get the 50,000 cash back in your account. So again, it's similar to a house loan. A margin in forex trading works the same. Think of it as a loan from your broker to open a larger position and you must participate with a part of your trading account and we call the amount that you have to put down, the down payment is the margin. The magnification or the mortgage is the leverage. So leverage, <coughs> excuse me, is a very close concept to margin. As these two concepts are interconnected, leverage offers traders a trade to trade a much larger position than the size of their trading account. Now, using leverage can open a much larger position than your initial trading account. With a 1 to 50 leverage, you can open a position 50 times as large as your trading capital. Okay. So we've got that down. We've got the orders, the instructions to your broker. Even if you're using a telephone broker and you call them, you know, you should give them the order correctly. Then we go on to the margin and leverage to figure out how much capital you have to have to secure that trade. And then we go on to something that's very important. This is called lot size. Now, many, many years ago when I started trading, every trade had a minimum lot size because trader brokers were paid on commission. Now, imagine if you wanted to buy two shares of stock and the stock was $100 a piece, be $200. But the broker was charging $300 commission because that covers his time, his knowledge, his effort, placing the order, securing the order, maintaining the order and everything else and his liabilities. So a broker, stockbroker, only worked in what we call lots. And he had whole lots or round lots. A broker would only sell stock to you in a round lot with 100 shares. You could buy 200 shares, 400 shares, 600 shares, because his commission didn't change if you were buying two shares or buying 100 shares. Today, we have three different lot sizes that especially apply to Forex. Now, commodities is a little bit different. Commodities, each contract has a specific size. So like when you buy gold, a contract for gold in the commodities market is 100 troy ounces. A contract for oil is 5,000 barrels of oil. A contract of orange juice is 50,000 gallons. That's it. They're not, they're not negotiable. One contract is this because they're set up as standardized universal contracts. In Forex and bonds and everything else, they, they have their individual markets lot size. In Forex, we have 100,000 units. Because imagine if, if, if a, the euro is trading at 118.25, and moves to 118.30, that's a fairly big move for a currency. But it's four decimals to the right. Okay. Well, if you only had a thousand euros and it moved that much, you made $50. Okay. 
but your spread and your cost and everything else way exceeded the $50. So we use leverage and we buy in lots. Okay, because if you bought 100,000 euros in a lot of the euro against the dollar, you would be paying say 10%, say we're using a 10% leverage, you would only be paying the euros trading at say 118. Yeah, so it was $118,000. You'd be paying down a deposit of $11,000 to tie up 100,000 euros. And then if the euro move by, you know, five pips, you would have ended up making a lot, you know, $500. So it was worth your position. Okay. Then we have mini and micro lots. A mini lot is 10,000 units. A micro lot is 10,000 units, is 1,000 units, and we have nano lots in some places, and those are only 100 units. Because remember, this also fills other industries or other sectors besides Forex. Now, these are not laws. These are just standardizations throughout the markets. Because when you're trading, say, for instance, CFDs, you don't have to trade lot sizes. You're trading dollar amounts. So you could actually take $2,795 worth of the euro and put up whatever the leverage is. You don't have to take a lot. Some brokers, especially straight Forex brokers, charge you, make you trade in lots. So, we have a standard lot size of 100,000 units. That's a $100,000 trade if you're trading in dollars. Trading with this size of a, a position means that the trader's account value will fluctuate by $10 for each pip that the asset moves. So remember I told you, if the asset moved five pips, it was a $50 profit. So for a trader that has $2,000 in their account, to trade a standard lot, it means a 20 pip move can make a 10% change in the account balance. So most retail traders with small accounts don't trade in standard lots, they trade smaller. But you don't need to bring a calculator with you. First of all, all the platforms will tell you this when you go to set up your trade. This can tell you what your, your, your margin is, what your requirements are, what the pip values are, everything. But we also have calculators, okay? They're easily available. They're just like a calculator you use to do math. They are a mathematical kind, but they're all formulated in there. So you have a st stop loss and take profit calculator. You put in the currency or the asset you want to trade, what currency your account is in, the position size you're taking, the amount you're willing to risk, where, you know, how much you would risk per trade, and the amount of risk for the take profit. How, where do you, how much do you want to make or think you can make on that profit? And whether you're buying long or selling short. And click the button and it's going to calculate and tell you, based on everything you gave us, this is where you'd have to put your stop loss and your take profit. Also margin. You're not sure? We have all wrapped up in one calculator is you put in the asset you're trading. Put in the leverage that your broker is offering or that you're willing to take. The, the currency that your calculator is in and the, size, the lot size you're buying, a lot, a, lot, a, mini, you know, a half a lot, a tenth of a lot, and reset it. And it's going to tell you what the exact margin requirement is. So in this case, I don't know what the euro was trading at, but it's the current market value at 10 to 1 in U.S. dollars per one lot for 100,000 euros, which was probably trading at about 115, 118, you'd have to put down 11,427. Same thing with, you know, we have the, lot, the margin requirement and we have the leverage requirement. We also have a stop loss calculator, which the asset you're trading, the size you're trading, how much or what percentage you're willing to lose what your down payment was and what what currency your account is in. And it's gonna calculate and tell you what the maximum stop losses are 29 points from the price in which you're setting to execute the trade. Then we have a, a stop, a, a lot size calculator. 
what asset, how many pips you just calculated a stop loss, what percentage you're willing, and what, how much you were willing to risk. And it's going to tell you how many lots that you are able to trade based on your account. Now, these automatically are pulling the data from the current price of the asset and all the information you need to know. They're available free of charge all over the internet, just like you know today. And you know your calculators are available everywhere. Now, pip value. A pip is a confusing little thing. A pip is the smallest increment that an asset will trade in. In four and forex is four digits to the right. But that pip that that pip has a different value depending on the currency. So calculating a PIP is also valuable while you monitor your trades. As price moves so many PIPs, it will allow you to give a dollar value to that move. Because remember, your account may be in dollars or you might be in the UK and in pounds. And you could be trading the USD JPY or you could be trading the Turkish Lira against the Swiss franc. But you need to see them moving, but you need to understand what that value of each move is to you and your dollars that you think in. So, for example, 500 pips of the U.S. dollar Mexican peso are considerably less in value than 500 pips of the Japanese U.S. dollar JPY. With the, U, with the Mexican peso exchange rate at 18 to 00, 0 500 pips is equal to one half of a peso which would be worth a move of $2.78 while 500 pips of a yen which gives you five yens to each pip would be valued at four dollars and 48 cents with the exchange rate at 112.50 for the usd jpy so you need to understand when these are moving and how they're trading what they are valued wise to you now i mentioned before when investors and traders purchase and sell financial instruments in the capital markets they do so on lots a lot is a fixed quantity of units depends on the financial security traded for stocks, and I did mention this, the typical lot size was around lots of 100 shares for many, many years until the advent of online trading. A round lot can also refer to the number of shares that can evenly be divided by 100, 300, 1,200 shares, 15,500 shares. However, now odd lots, which are orders less than 100 shares and mixed lots, several shares above 100, but are not divisible by 100, are more common. This being is because I might want to buy 12,000 shares of stock XYZ or ABC that we were talking about before. Or I might say I'm willing to invest $10,000 in stock ABC. Okay. Well, that $10,000 at $99.50 might be 1,027 shares hypothetically. Okay. So with online trading, the advent of online trading, we've moved away from all that. So that's a wrap. That's a lot for you to digest today, but you need to know this stuff inside and out. It's a few things that you have to memorize. You have to know. You have to be acceptable. They have to be part of your DNA. So keep that under wraps because in our next class, we're going to go start looking at market analysis, technical analysis, as well as fundamental analysis, the differences between analysis for stocks, commodities, Forex, and CFD trading. So that's a wrap for today. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you in class number four. Bye now.